Hi guys, this is James, and today I'd like to talk to you about biased parameter estimation, being the use of an estimator that does not actually point towards what you are trying to estimate. Biased estimation can be very useful when faced with a high degree of multicollinearity. If you aren't familiar with the term, multicollinearity just means that the independent variables in your regression model are highly correlated with one another. I'll quickly point out why this is a problem. To start, I'll pretend that I'm trying to model a particular variable, y, using x1 and x2 as predictors. Here I have a regression model of x1 against x2, and as we can see, these two variables are highly correlated with each other. Interestingly, x1 and x2 on their own also appear highly related to y, as demonstrated by these two plots. Now, here I have two models, one where y is being predicted by x1, and one where y is being predicted by both x1 and x2. As we can see, the inclusion of x2 doesn't seem to help the model too much, even though on its own it showed a really strong relationship to y. This is because x1 and x2 provide almost the same information. So when we add one of them to a model that already contains the other, they don't appear particularly important. With both x1 and x2 included in our model, we can't be entirely sure how either of these variables actually contribute to our prediction of y. Before we were able to say, look, x1 has a definitive positive relationship with y, and x2 also has a definitive positive relationship with y. But now there's a bit of confusion over how either of these variables actually relate to y, because they both want to contribute the same information, but only one of them is actually allowed to. Here I have a Venn diagram that illustrates this frantic struggle between our predictor variables. In the middle, we have the overlapping information that they provide, and on the outskirts we have the information that is unique to x1 and x2. When we were looking exclusively at our bivariate models, we were able to say for certain that any variation accounted for in y was attribu attributable to x1, because it was the only variable included in the model. Similarly, when x2 was our only predictor variable, we were able to attribute any variation accounted for to x2. However, now that both predictor variables are included together in a multivariate model, we can't be certain as to who accounts for what. For instance, all the variation in y could be primarily accounted for by x1, which would mean that x2 does not really contribute anything new. Or maybe both x1 and x2 contribute an equal amount, or maybe x2 contributes the most. This uncertainty as to which predictor variable is contributing what to the model vastly inflates the variance of their respective regression coefficients, which dictate exactly how each predictor variable relates to the dependent variable. To illustrate this, let's reconsider our example with some made-up numbers. We previously saw that a bivariate model suggested x2 to be highly positively related to y. Perhaps x2's regression coefficient was equal to 1.6, with a standard error of 0.1. However, in our multivariate model, where y is regressed onto x1 and x2, x2 has a regression coefficient equal to negative 0.3, with a standard error of 1.5. Note that the regression coefficient for x2 actually changed signs. Before it was positively related to y, and now it's negatively related to y. Let's pause and think about this for a second, because in real research, this can be somewhat problematic. Let's say a doctor is trying to predict a person's weight using their age and their height. Maybe age and height are both good predictors of weight, but are highly correlated. When included in a model together, height expresses a negative relationship with weight, which is completely counterintuitive. Now, note how these normal distributions for x2's regression coefficients overlap. The coefficient from the bivariate model has a tight distribution, suggesting the estimate is relatively accurate. The coefficient from the multivariate model, however, is extremely wide. Note that if we were to build a 95% confidence interval around our multivariate coefficient estimate, the bivariate estimate would fall well within our interval. So our model isn't necessarily telling us that x2 has a negative rela relationship with y, but that we are unable to accurately estimate this relationship, especially in comparison to our bivariate model. So. Now that we understand the complications that can arise when dealing with multicollinearity, we can start discussing biased parameter estimation and how it solves this problem. Remember that biased refers to an estimator that does not point to the true value you are trying to estimate. Let's say that the true parametric value for our x2 regression coefficient is 1.3, and its variation has been substantially inflated by our inclusion of x1 in our model. 
This is its true sampling distribution here. Using an unbiased estimator of x2's regression coefficient, we can see that obtaining a value of negative 0.3, as we did in our earlier example, doesn't seem that unreasonable. This value falls well within the unbiased estimator's sampling distribution. However, if we can use a biased estimator that does not point to the exact parametric value of x2's regression coefficient, but has substantially less variance, we actually have a higher probability of obtaining an estimate close to the true value of the parameter. So, maybe this biased estimator points to 1.5, which is not the true parametric value of our regression coefficient. But because of the way the probabilities work out, this biased estimator ends up being a better estimator than our unbiased one. If we decide to build 95% confidence intervals around each of these estimates, the unbiased estimator has an incredibly wide confidence interval, whereas the biased estimator has an incredibly tight confidence interval. So, probabilistically, we are much more likely to be closer to the true unbiased parameter if we use the biased estimate. I have a friend who is studying applied science and sometimes him and I discuss statistics. I remember showing this exact example to him and he said that sometimes statistics just seems like black magic and I would have to agree. I find this technique to be near unbelievable. If you are looking to build a regression model that suffers from a high degree of multicollinearity, you can use a method called ridge regression, which uses biased parameter estimation to derive regression coefficients. Ridge regression is a large topic on its own, so I won't go into detail on how to use it, but I've included a few links in this video's description to help you get started with it. Thanks for watching, and I hope this topic blew your mind, because it definitely had that effect when I first learned about it.